I think working at Langs was really formative to my career. Yeah, I look back on it uh, very fondly, yeah. I never worked for anybody else but Langs. I thought they were a great firm to work for, you know. Oh, I'm so proud to be part of the Barbican team. I think working on the Seven was probably the, the most prestigious job I've ever worked on. I was always impressed by the, the cooperation, the spirit, that was what Leng was all about. After the Second World War, Britain was rebuilt by an extraordinary workforce of ordinary men and women, armed with shods and trowels, measures and planes, an army of bricklayers, surveyors, carpenters and boys from the black stuff came in their thousands to make their mark. Lang was at the forefront of this construction revolution, building hospitals, homes, factories, schools, bridges and sites for industry. From Britain's first motorway to the second Seven Crossing, they built places that changed history and British lives forever. Lang was started in 1848, with the idea being to develop and train young members of the workforce. I actually wanted to be a joiner. I told my dad, he spoke to the manager of Langs at the time, he says there was a, a job as apprentice stonemason. I said, that's it, that'll do me. That was the first, the first straight window I worked on. I was just 17 then. That's me working on the east window. I'll be about 60, I think. I worked up there plenty of times, really, carrying buckets of water and everything like that up there. The view's absolutely brilliant. You can see all over the city from there. They were well known and well thought of, Langs and Carlisle, yes. They always looked after us well. I started work with Langs in 1966. I worked with Langs all the way through my career, 46 years. Working on the Seven was certainly the best job I've ever worked on. When we finished it, it was the biggest cable stayed bridge in the country. It made a big difference to getting in and out of Wales. The name has changed now to the Prince of Wales Bridge. I didn't realise that. No, I joined the company because my father worked for John Langs. And the downside was, when I made a mistake when I was an apprentice, when I got home, I got told off. <laughs> started working in Barbican, I was here seven years. We started doing the excavation, and a quarter of a million cubic metres of solid London clay came out. When we were building that wall through there, we told the bricklayer foreman that he's got to allow for the curvature of the earth because of the length of the wall. I came to work at Langs, I think it was 1989, and my role was a, as a graduate engineer. There was a big push at the time to try and get more women into the profession. At the time uh, when I joined Langs, I had already come from a university that was very male dominated. And when I joined Lang, I think they had 15 graduates that they recruited, and I was one, that was the only woman. What impressed me was the people were the important thing in the business. One of the people I worked with handed me a book, and it was the book about John Lang called Life and Belief. I never had any regrets of joining them, and I've never had any, anything other than good thoughts about looking back at the company and for what they did. Not just what they did for me, but what they did for everybody who worked for them. After the devastation wrought by World War II, John Lang's team of workers across the country managed to rebuild Britain, helping to shape the future of the country and the lives of its people. While some of those buildings still stand today, some have faded and disappeared over time. Held in the historic England archive, the John Lang Photographic Collection records the ambition and idealism of this incredible time, beautifully documenting the people who built Britain. Altogether, there's about a thousand people at peak working on the bridge. There were people came from all over the country, tip of Scotland, right down to Cornwall, a lot of camaraderie, all sorts of pub nights and what have you. The main challenge, which is what drove the construction methods for the bridge, was that the river is five kilometres wide at high tide. At low tide, you can walk all the way out to the main bridge. When the tide came in, it came in very fast, like about two metres an hour in terms of height. If you were out on the end of the main bridge, you couldn't run back fast enough, the tide would beat you. 
While we were working on the bridge, somebody discovered an old Viking longboat that had been buried under the silt. It's now on display in the museum. But every time I go over the bridge, you know, all the memories come back. And it's amazing. These are places that, that are good for apprentices. That's mostly what keeps the trade going and like that. It's the best teaching places. You have to be very, very patient because it's, sometimes the work's very slow. It's a lot faster now because they've got machinery and that, that sort of thing, you know. But when I first started, it was just like the same as it was nearly 2,000 years ago. On the last window there, there's uh, a head of Police Constable Russell, George Russell, who was killed at Oxenholm in a manhunt, 10th of February, 1965, when he died. I suppose, in a way, it was agreed, and uh, I said I would do it. It was the first head that I'd, I'd actually made, really. Oh, it's great. Everybody wants to know about the policeman's head. The first project that I was sent to from Lang was the A55, a project called the Penny Clip Tunnel. So my role was to read the drawings and translate those into something on the ground. So I'd be writing down all my calculations in the notebook with a pencil, a bit of rain, you know, you would go out with a plastic bag with your notebook in it and try and write it inside that. Only one toilet on the site that I was working on, and that was for use by everybody, so there was a bit of a push to get that resolved. I think in the end I had my own toilet with my own key. Two years ago, I brought a friend and he wanted to walk round. It was just like coming back home, and all the memories flashing back into your mind, how we done things, the people we met, when I go on other jobs, things we learnt here pop up and you know the answer where everyone else is scratching their heads. The idea of team spirit was vital. That's what it was all about. People would say, this is what we built because I was part of the company that achieved something as important as this.